After my last Oh Brother Where Art Thou video, I got a bunch of comments from people asking me about Tommy Johnson, or better yet, telling me about Tommy Johnson. They wanted to make sure that I knew that Tommy is based on an actual person from history who claimed to have sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads. Actually, he isn't based on just one person, but two people from history. And in the movie, Tommy comes face to face with Satan four times. Do you remember all four? Today we are talking about Tommy's arc and redemption and ultimately what happens to him at the end of the movie. Hi, I'm Kevin Harris and I help people understand themselves by helping them understand the stories that resonate with them. There actually was a musician named Tommy Johnson who lived in old Mississippi and claimed to have sold his soul to the devil in exchange for the ability to master the guitar. Actually, there were at least two guitarists in this era who made this claim. Robert Johnson is the most famous person to whom this myth has been attributed, but Tommy Johnson, no relation to Robert, came first. He was known for his eerie falsetto voice and intricate guitar playing, even throwing his guitar in the air and playing it between his legs. This was the age of Victorian prudishness. And a song like this, sang by a musician, caused, you know, great alarm to polite society. I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. But your kids are gonna love it. Before meeting Tommy, our unlikely heroes, Pete, Everett, and Delmar, have escaped prison and are on the run. Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? is a retelling of Homer's The Odyssey with a cyclops, sirens, and a lead character named Ulysses. It didn't actually start out with uh, The Odyssey. As we sort of got further and further into the script, we realized that um, it was essentially sort of an episodic story about the main character trying to get home. So that sort of suggested the Odyssey to us and, um, and we then went out and got the classic comics version of the Odyssey because we neither of us had read it and still have it. The original idea of an adventure featuring hobos and chain gangs in Depression era America came from the film Sullivan's Travels. Another influence for the three comedic main characters We thought you was a toad came from an early Three Stooges movie that's actually featured in Oh Brother Where Art Thou. When the Coen brothers realized that this was turning into the Odyssey type of adventure, it made sense to align it with more contemporary magical elements associated with the Deep South, such as the story of the devil at the crossroads. What I like about Oh Brother is that magic is implied. But we don't ever really see magic you know these things give me wars. like we might in, say, a Marvel movie. A miracle! Oh, it was a miracle! Delmer, don't be ignorant. In fact, believing in miracles is one of the main tensions of the movie. There's a perfectly scientific explanation for what just happened. That ain't the tune you were singing back down at the gallus. But I think the one irrefutable magic that we do experience in this film hey, is music. Music is everywhere, and it is definitely a driving force in the plot. In film structure, it is common for the hero or hero's journey, once they accept the call to an adventure, to gather allies and be gifted tools or knowledge that will help them later on in their journey. Enter Tommy. Baptism. You two are just dumber than a bag of hammers. Right after two of the three get baptized, Come over, Everett. Let's give that colored boy a lift. They come across Tommy standing at the crossroads an ally with a special gift. You fools going past Tish Mingo? Sure, hop in. A gift that ultimately saves all four of them, at least from the law. Law is a human institution. Tommy doesn't quite fit in with the Three Stooges motif, but comes and goes when he is conveniently needed. Pete also disappears for a while, and neither Pete, Delmar, or Tommy are seen at the very end after the flood scene. Pete got it, brother. Ultimately, this is Everett's story. But Tommy is more than just a magical aid to the Three Stooges. He has his own arc and redemption. And the people are drifting Door to door Can't find no heaven I don't care where they go His first run-in with death and the devil is by his own choosing Well, I had to be at that there crossroads last midnight to sell my soul to the devil. At the crossroads to learn the guitar. His next satanic encounter is when he is captured 
by the KKK rally. Well, of course, they're all manner of lesser imps and demons. Led by Homer Stokes and his assistant. And he is rescued by Everett, Pete, and Delmar. A third encounter is at the campaign dinner where the Soggy Bottom Boys perform. Crazy! No one's ever going to believe we're a real band. He uses his gift of music, along with the other three, to defeat the evil Homer Stokes. This here music is over! I, and I know, I, Which I realize now is kind of a musical showdown with the devil. Reminiscent of the devil went down to Georgia, who was then exercised from the building by being carried out on a rail, a common practice at the time. The fourth encounter is at the gallows. Where's the happy little tire swing? One of their graves are being dug. End of the road, boys. You have eluded fate and you have eluded me for the last time. God have mercy. And Tommy, along with the other three, are each seen praying individually for forgiveness. Tommy is not vain like Everett. How's my hair? Or lustful like Pete. I've seen him first! Or even dumb like Delmar. Okay, I'm with you fellas. And even though Tommy made a deal with the devil at the beginning of the story, it ain't fit. we never see him do anything devilish is that right? other than perhaps play the blues. And the word blues is a French definition. It means that it's subversive, that it's a little risque. It's not the English definition. And so his sins are washed away along with the devil and his hound and Everett's vanity. In this symbol of baptism, the three, in a reference to Moby Dick, are saved by a floating coffin. Hey, there's Tommy. The roll top desk. Tommy, what you riding there? That Tommy is seen clinging to is where the ring that they were searching for roll top desk. was said to be found. Even though the ring is dismissed later in a comedic twist, That's not my ring. this is the treasure they have been seeking and Tommy was key to finding it. I said I thought it was in the roll top desk. Because the real treasure was forgiveness from God. One of the reasons I watch movies is to experience a level of enchantment that is often missing from day-to-day -day life. In our secular and technologically focused world, many of us don't see or believe in God anymore, and we don't expect miracles. In the book, Hunting Magic Eels, Richard Beck reminds us that 500 years ago, we lived in an enchanted world. The existence of God was taken for granted. Of course God existed. There was a heaven, and there was a hell, and everything you did pointed you toward one destination or the other. The devil prowled the world like a hungry lion, seeking souls to tempt and devour, if not the devil, then his minions. Miracles were the norm, and supernatural wonders abounded. While some might say that we have grown up and left those fairy tales behind, I don't think we really have, or should. Open discussion of spiritual things in polite and impolite society may have gone the way of Bruno. It is Pete, I am ashamed of. But one of the reasons I do this channel is to remind us of spiritual truths that are hidden in plain sight in our movies and shows that we culturally experience together and return to over and over. And if we didn't notice the spiritual aspects of art imitating life, what else might we be blind to? I've always wondered, what's the devil look like? We may not believe in the cartoonish description of the devil with red skin, a tail, and horns. He's white. As white as you folks. But we do experience real and felt opposition to our efforts to do what is right. So what happens to Tommy? We don't see him at the very end of the movie, but it can be assumed that since he was taught to play the guitar, that he will retain that ability. And since the Soggy Bottom Boys were all pardoned and have reached a level of fame and even a job offer from the governor, that they will continue performing together and make a decent living. Feather beds. Silk sheets. So even though Tommy made a deal with the devil and the other three served time, that was not the only crossroads they passed on their journey. They were not trapped in their past mistakes and could still choose to become bona fide in the eyes of God. You're gonna go far. A lesson for all of us. And that is the moral of this story. If you haven't seen my first Oh Brother Where Art Thou video, in that one I dive deeper into the symbols and meaning of the overall story. I hope to see you again. Thank you.